Delay analyst interview questions and answers. What are the methods used to analyze the delay? The observational method examining a schedule, by itself or in comparison with another, without the analyst making any changes to the schedule to simulate any specific scenario. Contemporaneous period analysis and as built versus as planned are common examples that fall under the observational basic method. The modeled method the analyst inserts or extracts activities representing delay events into or from a CPM network and compares the calculated results of the before and after states. Common examples of the modeled method are the collapse as built, time impact analysis, and the impacted as planned. How to classify the methodologies for analyzing delays according to the timing of the occurrence of the causes leading to the delay compared to the timing of preparing the study and analysis. This distinction in timing is one of the most significant factors in the choice of methods. For example, contract provisions prescribing methods of delay analysis typically contemplate the preparation of such analyses in the prospective mode in order to facilitate the evaluation of time extensions. Therefore, the majority of contractually specified methods, often called DIA consists of the insertion of delay events into the most current scheduled update that existed at the time of the occurrence of the event, or prospective, forward-looking method. At the end of the project the choices of analysis methods are expanded with the full advantage of hindsight offered by the various forms of as-built documentation. In addition, if as-built documentation is available, the best evidence rule demands that all factual investigations use the as-built as the primary source of analysis. Also the timing distinction is often mirrored by a change in personnel. That is, often the forensic schedule analyst who typically works in the retrospective mode is not the same person as the project scheduler who worked under the prospective mode. How to determine the critical and near-critical activities. Paths may collapse numerous times so that a path that originally has plenty of float becomes the critical path. It is impossible for the analyst to know what the final critical path is until all of these delays are considered. The path that is near-critical in one window may be become critical in the next especially if delays are being extracted from the critical path. How project records become the sources for conducting the analysis. The scope of information available in the project records used to reconstruct the as-built time schedule. How is the investigation of events carried out? The investigation requires many subjective decisions, for example, defining what technical approach should be used to measure or determine the delay identifying the activities causing the delay, explaining the reasons, and how to apply the chosen method. What are the elements that are considered to be complications that require case-by-case -case intervention by the analyst include significant changes in activity descriptions to a schedule activity occupying a pre-existing activity ID. Assignments of a different activity ID to a pre-existing scheduled activity. Changes in actual start or actual finish values previously reported. Any change in calculation mode such as progress override and retain logic. How to analyze the delays in the absence of a baseline program and no updates to the baseline. In the absence of competent scheduled updates. The analyst must err on the side of over-inclusion in selecting the controlling set of as-built activities. The determination must be a composite process based on multiple sources of project data including the subjective opinion of the percipient witnesses. All sources used to identify the as-built controlling path should be tabulated and evaluated for reliability. Contemporaneous perception of criticality by the project participants is just as important as the actual fact of criticality because important project execution decisions are often made based on perceptions. 
perceived or subjective as built critical paths can be based on interview of the hands-on field personnel and the project scheduler contemporaneous non-CPM documentation such as monthly update reports meeting minutes daily reports how to verify the available data before conducting the analysis to ensure the validity of the data the process of assuring the validity of the source input data that forms the foundation of the various forensic schedule analysis methodologies to minimize the failure of an analysis method based upon the flaw use of source data whether that reflection is an accurate model of reality is almost always a matter of debatable opinion by verifying the following Source Validation Baseline Schedule Selection, Validation, and Rectification As Built Schedule Sources, Reconstruction, and Validation Schedule Updates, Validation, Rectification, and Reconstruction Identification and Quantification of Discrete Impact Events and Issues What are the modifications or changes that may be included in the schedules for forensic analysis? Do not make any subjective changes to improve it or make it more reasonable. The obvious exception to the above would be where the explicit purpose of the investigation is to evaluate the reasonableness of the schedule for planning, scheduling and project control purposes. The forensic analysis considers the investigation of schedule deviations at sufficient degree of detail. How to evaluate the remaining duration of the activities using both approaches the hindsight or blind sight? Hindsight method. In this method, the actual status of the schedule activity in the succeeding schedule update period is used to calculate the remaining duration of the previous schedule update. Blind sight method. In this method, it is assumed that the analyst does not have the update schedule for the succeeding period and has no knowledge of the project conditions later than the update under investigation. Therefore, the analyst must stand in the shoes of the scheduler at the time of the project. Note that the progress curve created by this method assumes a straight line. What are the activity level variants and how can you measure it? Two figures a plan and an actual are subtracted from each other to compute the variance. These two figures may be dates, durations, or productivity measurements. Thus, the entire variance needs to be tied to one or more causes for the variance. What are the methods used for quantifying the deviations in the activity level and how are they classified as delays? by using two methods variance method or independent method depending on the nature of the delay or the availability of necessary documentation for example suppose that the activity level variance for a specific activity is 10 days in the variance method the entire 10 days will be distributed among the responsible parties however in the independent method the variance is not even looked at in the beginning Instead, the analyst researches project documentation to determine the delay amount. Therefore, if the project documentation only states that the activity was delayed three days by an event, the remaining seven days of the variance will not be assigned to this delay and may not be assigned to the party responsible for this delay. If the documentation states the delay event was 12 days, the analyst will consider the delay to the activity was 12 days but since the variance is 10, the other two days may have been made up via acceleration. Therefore, in the variance method, the analyst is guided to the delay amount by the amount of variance. On the other hand, in the independent method, the analyst does not review the variance, but relies on what is written in the documentation to make its determination of delay amount. How to create a schedule as it was actually built and determine the critical path built and the controlling activities. 
One method to show the as-built critical path is to create a collapsible as-built CPM schedule where the as-built schedule actual dates are converted into actual activity durations and actual driving lag durations. The total float values of the collapsible as-built schedule can be used to show the as-built critical path if the as-built logic was determined using the enhanced logic rules that not only uses the early start and early finish dates to simulate the as-built dates but also determine the proper late start and late finish dates. While there is acknowledgement that this is technically feasible, currently there is no agreement among practitioners on a common set of these enhanced logic rules. The closest the analyst can come to determining the as-built critical path is to cumulatively collect from successive scheduled updates the activities that reside on the critical path between the data date and the data date of the subsequent update. The same technique can be used to determine the as-built near critical activities. If the updates are available. What are the important key concepts associated with delay analysis which always giving rise to disputes? Delay concurrency. Float criticality. Constructive acceleration. Recovery schedules. Disruption and lost productivity. Delay mitigation. These problems always giving rise to disputes because they are intertwined with justification for delay. When the claimant is entitled to recover the expenses of extending the time of the project, Compensable delay exists where the claimant is entitled to recover not only a time extension but compensation for expenses associated with the extension of completion date or the prolongation of the duration of work. Executive usability is a prerequisite to compensability. Therefore, where compensability can be established, executive usability is assumed. In the absence of any contractual language or other agreements, the conventional rule governing compensability is that the claimant must first account for concurrent delays in quantifying the delay duration to which compensation applies. That is, the contractor is barred from recovering delay damages to the extent that concurrent contractor caused delays offset owner caused delays. And the owner is barred from recovering liquidated slash stipulated or actual delay damages to the extent that concurrent owner caused delays offset contractor caused delays. How to prove the concurrent delay? The evaluation proceeds in two distinct steps. First, the liability for each delay event is individually analyzed. The classification is made primarily according to the responsibility for the cause of the delay but may also consider the contractual risk allocation of the delay event regardless of the party who caused such delay. The second step consists of evaluating whether each delay event is concurrent with other types of delays to arrive at the final conclusion of execusability, compensability, or non-execusability. What is the difference between using both the littoral theory and the functional theory in estimating concurrency? Under the littoral theory, the delays have to be literally concurrent in time, as in happening at the same time. In contrast, under the functional theory, the delays need to be occurring within the same analysis period. The functional theory is more liberal in identifying and quantifying concurrency since the delays need only occur within the same measurement period. While in the littoral theory, only delays require same time occurrence. The assumption made by the functional theory practitioner is that most delays have the potential of becoming critical once float down the path on which they reside has been consumed. Who owns the float in the project and its impact on the contractor's right to slow down the pace of work? Float, a shared commodity is available for consumption on a first-come first-served basis. What is the difference between directed and constructive acceleration and its relationship to financial compensation? Directed acceleration, formal instructions by the owner directing the contractor to 
1. Complete all or a portion of the work earlier than currently scheduled. 2. Undertake additional work, or 3. Perform other actions to complete all, or a portion, of the contract scope of work in the previously scheduled time frame that otherwise would have been delayed. This could include mitigation efforts that usually have no costs associated with them. Constructive Acceleration Acceleration is said to have been constructive when the contractor claims a time extension but the owner denies the request and affirmatively requires completion within the original contract duration, and it is later determined that the contractor was entitled to the extension. 